it's going to be a tiebreaker then. No, you know, the more, says I, so. I really feel like the more we go into this, the more and the more I understand teams and players, I feel like the better I'll get at this. You know what I mean? And really, really comes down to. And like I told you before, like I, I predict a tiebreaker. A tiebreaker. Um, we have to get a map where it's not going to be one one. I feel like Himmels is another one one map for these two really? teams specific. Yeah, I do. I do you we feel have. Like it's- just two well, here's the thing, because favorite. because both of these teams have played Himmelsdorf, and we have not, uh, and they have played against better teams, but we just did not, I think both of these teams, well, I know Tomatitos won, uh, their, did they play Himmels against Catcham? I feel like they did. It may have been, and that's where some of the stats get skewed a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or it's like you kind of expect them to beat Cat Jam on Himmelstorf, but that doesn't necessarily reflect is our Tomatitos like super confident on Himmels or not? Maybe they are, right? But uh, look I know for I know they Steve also played. I know. Two, two, seven, seven, I think they played Jack. I know they played Jack, and I think Team Flair played F- FHS, or it might be the, the other way around. But I know both of these teams did play good teams on this map. And uh, double I S seven on they got clapped. defense. Yeah, I don't feel like we've seen that, and it's going to be well. They don't have one. Neither of these teams are bringing one their teams. Mm-hmm. They're they're not. And look, Dark Ninja's doing an old traditional scout, a little bit different with the physics change. He's going to kind of prop himself up there to try to stay a little bit hidden from that window and just get the early right, eyes surf. there, and yeah. then leave and not be spotted from the hill until a little bit later. And now I don't know how tra- I don't know how trading. Oh, who did he? Get? Oh, he's getting shot in the butt by somebody on hill. It looks like here. Yeah, Gee. if he plays that window, he has to situate sideways, or the bat chat is gonna tee off. Yeah, sheep, you're right. Sheep been a very good fantasy performer. I was checking my fantasy team, uh, and that and that's that's actually interesting because he is a hundred percent the caller for their team. And now Nexus is in an awkward spot. He's familiar with that position. He knows it. And sheep is a spot. very well, you know Sheep, right? He's a very mm-hmm. old player. Used to he was a caller of R seven, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong, for a, for a long time in the fifteen fifteen format. That's I don't one know of those panic shots where like his muscle memory didn't go quite correctly. He fired a little bit late. Right, a little bit late. It's on more the, important that he doesn't mm, take damage. It's more than important he does. That, damage there is yeah. bonus. It's more important he doesn't take damage. And so and they got that info. That info is more important yep. than him hitting that shot. Because mm-hmm. now they're flexing and they got lit and they are not flexing. I mean, they're just keep spot. they're just going up the hill. Nexus and so spot Fluky and them crossing here on the K line if his loadout he's is. He's only correct. gonna spot the two seven seven. And so what we're gonna see here is the IS4 is going back. He understands what's going on. They're trying to take hill. Nexus is, you know, he's like He should have Fluky spotted. Yeah, he has mm-hmm. Fluky spotted. And they have to assume the Fluky's not going alone, right? And I think so. We're gonna. This is a very clean back. attack. They have so many tanks out of the fight. Uh, this and is like, one of those things where Toma. Two minutes. Yeah, Toma does. Toma does not need to go for cap. They need to just probably push this out while there's two tanks out of the fight. Technically three because Nexus has taken a lot of damage here. Even Bloop taking some damage running. So it, they might actually just go for the cap pressure. Maybe two on cap. And it just oh, um, because PM is it's it's even on HP actually, so when maybe they just go for the cap pressure. Mm-hmm. It's hard for them to it, you know we saw teams get destroyed when they go K two J one on Correct. attack and they have to fight tanks out there. But it's there a very no strong position. There, the so two seven seven is them. in a very strong strong position for Bastion, right? And mm-hmm. the Nexus basically can't get out. Well, he might start flexing now because the Batch and the fifty B have basically made it to where he can kind of leave safely. And maybe they'll just sure, have Nexus go for. Some, if he gets into that cubby, he should be okay. He's because fine. Because if they come in for him, mm-hmm. then the bat chat and. Oh, they're using the 50B for resets, but they should have somebody try to take the shots for him before they do this. Uh, I think he's going to look for kind of a specific part of the cap if he can. Otherwise, he has to edge across that road just a little bit and it's not pretty to try to do that Mm -hmm. he's just looking to see where it could be on the cap if they try to cross this and look at that dark ninja takes a shot from luxon but returns fire but not a good trade but external does get the trash it looks like servant it looks like they have decided to kind of pick these guys over going for like total cap pressure and maybe the right choice they only really have the i7 to help support and does get i mean if they pick the auto loaders yeah, that would be pretty good. That would be pretty decisive here. 
as long as they don't trade too poorly. But the problem is Nexus is still up there. That's still a very strong mm -hmm. position, especially and if you Vanger want to try to push those. And starting to come closer, too. Sheep and is kind of out of position here while Serve is getting clipped, but it looks like Dark Ninja kind of realizing this. For serve. Mm -hmm. he, gets a, he gets, I think, three shots for one there. Oh, but no, Sheep. Sheep's going for the really nice eight line. This but the problem really with this is so many people can shoot him for this. Looks like he's just only going to focus. So he's just got to go completely yeah. fast. He'll take a hit. Looks like external oh, is simping yes, for his boy, though. But, I mean, clipping this is still really good, nonetheless. Yeah, definitely get all of his shots out here. Even if he doesn't kill anyone, if he gets the shots into external, it helps so that the, the heavies are going to be And Banjo to PM kind of moving up. You know, Bastion's up cap pressure. Now. Correct. Fluky looking to just hold this corner, actually pushing PM so he doesn't get past him. Looking to the simp for his boy, Surf, but Surf goes down as PM picks up a kill here. Looks like Hector is looking to... Oh, Hector probably shot both of his shots. Got unlucky, and he's now getting clipped out by External here. External will not be able to pick up the kill. And Sheep ends up finishing him, and now it's just basically they won their attack on Himmel. So if their defense is a lot, um, you know, stronger than we've seen from Team Flare, uh, then if I feel like this match was so much closer than it should have been. You know, with having two, two tanks out of the fight, for so long. It was awkward. It was a. It, it was this was the chess match where, I this is one of the reasons why I love Himmel's Storm. It was yes, there's a strat. There's okay, we spotted this. Now we're gonna go do that. Sure, with the hill, and then the you know we're gonna go to the two line. All that was fine, but it was that little thing of okay, now we're gonna put the bat chat into the courtyard. Okay, now we're gonna put this guy here. Okay, now we're gonna put the 50B here. Okay, now we're gonna put this guy. And then Sheep's play on the A line, I think was honestly the low key decisive part. And it's not that necessarily it's just Sheep because he's the overall caller, like you mentioned. It's not to take away from other people because, you know, right. two seven sevens have, everyone has to play their role right. for this, but it's Actually, this I don't think Hector bounced because he gets to 2K. So if I remember right, well, I was just kind of confused, so maybe he shot some the bat shot and then the 50B. But he doesn't have a kill, but it was just really interesting how, Hec like, the 50, because if I remember right, Sheep left the 50B on, like, 700, and then Hector came over there in the corner, so. That was just very well done by by Toma. Like, I I don't know. it The, the bat shot and the 50B kind of got just isolated they, i don't know right. if they needed to commit both in there maybe they had to commit one i was just surprised just saw i don't know about you but i was surprised one. nexus stayed there for so long yeah i felt i think he felt like there was no way for him to get out because he would have to mm -hmm. leave on the three line right and he'd already taken he was already at about half hp right and then we so, seen, and then we saw this is4 gameplay and what have we said about the is4 is4 moving moving oh, having to push anchor. Right, it's an anchor, right? Who do we see? Mm -hmm. We've seen two players um, anchor in it on the one line around E1, and they've done wonders. If I remember right, it was Chase and Wally, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, if yeah. my memory serves me right, I think it was Chase and I know Wally, it was Wally. And they, yeah. No, I think it was Chase. Chase was the other one because that's FHS, yeah, I, correct? I think, I think, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, and so we've seen how it works. Because it just stops the 277 from getting there. You know what I mean? Because it's mm -hmm. so hard for him to win that 1v1 because their DPM is about the same while he has, like, you have to shoot him one more shot to, to actually kill him, right? Because he has, like, 2,900 yeah. HP. And then on and top the of that... And the on Himmelstorf, if it's, like, the tank that's kind of out there, right, mm -hmm. and has to come back because there's a play on the other side, it's hard... Uh, terrain resistance is still solid. I mean, it's not great. It, it's still a, a slow heavy. The but field, like, the field it, mods make it tolerable. To Correct. It's not going to be a 705A or an E100 Ooh, that's going to take ages. This is the second or, or time we've seen them. The we've seen them play the 60 TP before. I think they're the team that we kind of saw that on this. And it worked. It was Hector. We see them. It? It, no, it's Sebastian because Sebastian I think he because I think he played because he played on Ghost Town and he has played on Himmels before too. You're right, and I think in both games he put up really high numbers. I know. Um, I think I think on the the last time we seen him on Himmels, he didn't put up high numbers, but he had a lot of like uh, damage blocked. Like it was like almost three k, you know. Uh, yeah, it, but he he only really put up good. like it was like twenty two hundred damage, but like three k blocked, and three k blocked in six v six is insane. 
we, but we're focusing on that. Look at Team Flare. Mm -hmm. That's two, 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 two fifty Bs, mm -hmm. two VZs, mm -hmm. and two IS sevens. Mm -hmm. So they're also opting for these IS sevens. Now they the IS sevens didn't seem to really work too well on defense, and I. I I hesitate to say that I would bring two of them necessarily, unless I know exactly one of them seems. Well, fine, what do you, what do you, what, what, would you prefer? One thirteens. I would prefer a one thirteen, a two seven seven, or something. Yeah, maybe else, two two seven sevens. I don't know. You, maybe you it's can a, have a hold down for it to really be. Effective. It might. It's, here's it's the thing, though. In this grade. The one thing I could, the only thing I could think of, it might be HP play, because I have sevens okay. can take like one extra shot compared to two seven sevens. Um, and they might, the IS-7s just might be there to take the shots for the VZs. They're also really freaking fast if they're set up interestingly enough. So, because I could see that being like a total hill play. You know what I mean? Because all of them would mm -hmm. be able to get up the hill. But it looks like they might actually go straight down the 8 line with the 50 Bs going up the hill. This is this a very aggressive. Is a good idea. Yeah. Because look, they're all, they're running turbo. <clears throat> And that's one thing the I-7 is really strong at, is coming off of that spawn on the hill. For those who don't play attack defense, it's similar to the counter spawn. I-7s go downhill so fast, and actually faster than a 113. Well, I don't know about a 277 with turbo, but like the top no, speed No, it does, is so because high. it has this top speed, and it's it reaches it. The top speed is it. so yeah. high. It's, it goes like it just, 75 down the hill or something. So as long as it doesn't do what Nexus had to do here, where it's yeah. like turn around, they just get there from the, the timing for an IS-7. This is odd. It's like a timing on Himmel's door for an IS-7 to go down the 8 line. Isn't it's this the second? Than what you this is the second time tank. we've seen Team Flare support a tank and then leave it there. A really interesting. And actually, a sixty TP at the church. Uh, traditionally, and it serves. Fours used there for years, mm -hmm. and it could be served saying, you know what, I, you know, let me bring the type of tank I want to bring there. Because sometimes teams would be bring like super conquerors and stuff there. Yeah, like, well, we've seen an IS four like there. We've seen a super. Con I think we've seen and almost. And we've seen an E one hundred there too. Straight. Mm -hmm. As, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, a 60 TP can side scrape, like, uh, it's probably serviceable there. Like, it's not going to be perfect, but it, it has the higher caliber gun than, say, an IS-4. And it can probably get your resets a little bit easier. And it just has that little bit more HP, right? Like, well, it's not much more, though. Not much more. But almost pushing 3k with the, the new improved modules and all that in Banjo here. Showing you IS sevens though. Yeah, I'm fast, but I also have almost twenty eight hundred HP of my own. And he's gonna probably just start putting on cap pressure. And will serve be able to get a cheeky shot and serve This is really interesting because look at line. their team. This is a bait. This is a bait to get them to flex north. What is Surf? And then they're there? going to push really hard south. Is this just a pure bait so that they don't think that someone's across? Because he started at the church, right? And yeah. That red building on the left of your screen in the cap is what I refer to as the church, by the way. For those curious, you can see the giant clock tower. It's not actually a church. It's we just call it the church. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's the building in between the 60 TP and the I-7. So the fact that he went all Ooh, the way back means that he's not spawned. Oh, interesting. I think they're going for like a really strong crossing shots and then they're, they're fast and enough the thing. to no one's gonna cross this no. is what's messed up they don't know that serve is there so normally teams will cross either d line or b line and typically b line to get these resets and assume that the enemy team is all set up there but no one's actually gonna have to cross because service already crossed that's the value of going there with their initial and look at this this is actually a very meta decision, and they know Plus external knowing the tank from so Team much. Flare, no one's going to be at A0. No one's going to be there. There's 250Bs, two VZs, and two I7s. There's no E3. There's yeah, no, look, Sir there's poking nothing, here no to problem. see. He's, he's, he probably thinks Leading it's like every hill push. He's just double-checking before he makes a play, and he'll get the reset he'll on probably, Banjo, and all yeah. of Team Flare are going to sit there and go, oh, All he needs to do is shoot HG. Yeah, he's going to have easy resets. They're bleeding the clock. They don't. They want to. So when he gets this reset and say, let's say less than thirty seconds, that's dude. They're gonna have to play their going up. Right. Then Team... Flair has to pivot and make something happen because mm -hmm. they're not gonna get the punish they wanted. So it looks like Tomatito is kind of a uh, five heading. Uh, this this uh, against Team they Flair. They stayed a step map. ahead on their initials. Yeah, they did. Yeah, and maybe because they brought the sixty. Here it is. You know, they're thinking here. Here comes reset. They they say that was an HG, eh? There. That looked like HG. It was. He didn't hit him for like it was But that's he all he needed to do. He wanted to make sure he got the reset. And, mm -hmm. and that's the, the valuable, smart thing to do. And look at that. Now Banjo has to back off. And now they're saying, oh, no, we're not going to get a five-line punish. We have three minutes, 45. We got to make a play. And they're starting to head over towards the three. 
probably make a courtyard play or a crossing on the three line because they, they have to do something. They don't have time to do cat pressure and they, they, they can't do, they can't rotate back for the 60 TP. This is one of those things, those scenarios where I think the last time they had a 60 TP, they played them somewhere differently. And I think as a result that they may have yeah. thought that. That's what I was thinking. Mm hmm. And I'm wondering, because I'm guessing Sheep got lit in the IS-4 somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, and the I mean, that's that strong. That like, how can Bloop 1v1 that, you know? Like we were talking about before, in IS-4 and E1, it's just broke. Broken and unless you... big yeah. clip damage. It's going to take three clips of Because 306 AP is Golem. not good for Rust. Rust. Zero bounce. Zero bounce. It's going to take three clips. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, In other good words, luck with it'll that. take a good minute to kill him if everything goes perfectly. On top of that, they have 2k uh, up HP, and that's not just from blades, this is even from tank picks, you know, because they have 250 mm -hmm. Bs. They have a lot of auto loaders. It looks like Nexus is going to be the first one going across here, taking two shots of damage as a result, while PM also takes a shot of damage. So Hector getting. I think Bastion tried to clip Bloopy, maybe? Bloop? Blippi. He must have, or he must. Have oh my God, him. Hector taking a lot of damage here, going one shot. Oh he's, he's man, focused. he is the first one down in this matchup, and the 50B Dark Ninja going for Luxon, while Bastion looks to try to pick off Nexus, or no, he's actually trying to pick off PM. Looks like Sheep misses PM. Sheep basically has these kills here. He just needs to take his time, make sure he pens. Looks like they're getting them down. And Sheep is just uh, kind yeah, of he a just Yeah, he's just in a really good position. Mode. Yeah. I mean, HP has stayed relatively the same since they were up a little bit ago. Yeah, but correct. Yeah, it's, it's just, just the 2k just gap keep... is still a thing. Yeah, Thomas just getting more and more of a lead. And they're just not able to isolate something and kill it. That's been the biggest problem. And, yeah, and on that, top of that, on top of that, was an external kind of offside. He couldn't really get across because of the 60. Yeah, because he was at B zero and he had nowhere to really go. Once, once there was and they're and they're the ones attacking. So if the 60 TP just stays full HP across the, the map and the time runs out, you know, like he's yeah. just slowly coming over, just making sure that he can kind of get a shot on that uh, external while he comes down. It and looks like it's over external. here, and like uh, so looks like Thomas Toma... gonna take a two zero lead on Himmelsdorf, getting mm -hmm. them to a three one uh, lead. And look, look at the HP. Oh well, down goes Sheep, but a uh, good rotation of HP on Thomas' part, and just well executed defense, just well executed. And like you said, probably a little bit of mind games as well, because I there's no way that flare sets like what the way flare set up was fine their tank picks were fine everything was like okay nothing was like glaringly wrong mm -hmm. it's just they made a big oversight of just not knowing that someone had already crossed the, that serve had already crossed the five line that i don't know if that is, is that is that is that vision they could no, get it? oh you're talking who, you're talking about the 60 tp i don't even think the they 60 can, tp can they even get that without like mm, no not really without unless like a bat a, chat you know what i mean unless they had a bat chat or something like that they and then on top of that it, 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 unless it, it, the i7 it, goes straight to the five line yeah and then window, it depends on maybe, spawn too mm -hmm. 60 tp especially if it's running things like turbo i don't think stuff, they i don't think they tried to light that crossing no they did not i think they maybe the only thing i could think of is their way that they were lined up because they had an uh 60 tp and is4 is that they, they were going to be really, really just like in the corner, right? And they mm -hmm. weren't going to be... I know that you can light it possibly, but it would be really spawn dependent. And I don't know with the improved modules on a 60 TP. Because you will always spot things like an E100 if you're an IS-7 going to the uh, G6, G5 window on attack. Mm -hmm. I know it gets like plus but, two speed. That's about... But a 60 TP, I don't, I, don't, I don't know, especially with turbo. Like it, it's... And if anyone gives it maybe a nudge going at the start, right? Oh, that, that's that can true. affect it Like too. a VZ or something. Mm-hmm. It was still, it wasn't like, I think, you know, for, having like a team of 4,100 and that many people alive at the end kind of makes it, uh, I feel like, a decisive defense. Yeah, that, it felt as they had a plan and it all executed appropriately. They, 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 I think that they had flair do exactly what they, they wanted to do and this is what's really odd you said these teams are really close but it could be a lot of back and forth but 
every single one of the victories has been decisive. Flair's victory on the first round. Yeah. On proc, super decisive. It's like, we know what Toma's going to do. We know what we're going to do. We're going to do this, 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 this. And we just trap him and we just slaughter him. Every game since, though, has been the other way around with Toma doing it to Flair. The second yeah. game on proc and the two on him. The so second game on like proc, just I just still control. almost like want to rewatch it because I just don't know what was going on there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then these Himmels, I mean, I, I, the first, first Himmels was close. Uh, you know, Toma just did really good. They played really decisively. They got that cap pressure, you know, that rotation and stuff like that. Um, looks like we have a brief time out called by, uh, it looks like it was Toma. So we have just a little bit of time before we go to the next game. It won't be a little too long, bit of just time, a, just a, about a minute delay. Mm -hmm. That's why we're kind of sitting here for a moment. 